Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today we'll be looking at uh, objects on an inclined plane. And to begin with, in the past, we looked at an object on a flat surface. So if you look at this diagram, the first picture that we have here, we see that we have an object on a flat surface. And when the object is on a flat surface, we can identify the forces that are acting on the object. So to begin with, if we look at this, we can say that there's a gravitational force acting on the object, pulling it down. Then we can also say that there's a normal force acting on the object, pulling it up. And in this case, uh, it's actually the normal force is the reaction force of the surface on the object, pushing it up. And basically, in this case, we can even say that the two forces will be equal because the object is at rest. Now, the question arises that what happens when there's an incline. That means the object is no more on a flat surface. The, the surface has a slope. So just to show you, uh, the, one of the forces uh, the acting on it will be gravity. And we know that gravity always acts downwards. So that's the gravitational force acting downwards. And if you take this object and we incline it, we tilt it, we see that we get this case here. And this diagram is similar to the diagram on the right hand side here. And we see that when we incline it, the force, the normal force, the reaction force, which was acting perpendicular upwards now, does not act perpendicular upwards, but it acts perpendicular to the surface. And to continue, if we have to take this object here and we have to look at the forces acting on the object on the incline, and we put it here this way, we'll see that these are the two forces acting on the incline if there is no friction. So the two forces acting on the object when an object is on the incline is the normal force acting perpendicular to the surface and this gravitational force acting downwards. Now, another thing that we have to realize is that when we work with uh, forces acting on the incline, when, we, when an object is flat on a flat surface, we'll say that the x direction will be the horizontal uh, component will be, the horizontal component will be the x intercept and the vertical component will be the y-intercept. But when we put objects on an incline now, it's important to realize that the inclined plane creates the x and y-intercept that looks like this, where the x-intercept is hor uh, horizontal to the surface in, at an angle, and the y-intercept will be um, the vertical line, which will be uh, according to this diagram here. So it's important to realize that when we have an object on a flat surface, the x intercept will be horizontal to the surface and the y intercept will be vertical to the surface. But when we have the incline, the x intercept will be parallel to the plane as in this direction and the y intercept will be perpendicular to the plane as in this direction. And that is important uh, to, to realize when we are doing sums relating to inclined planes. Now, going further, if we look at an inclined plane, we see a, a, a case here where we have our x and y intercept, where we have the x component uh, parallel and the y component perpendicular. And here's the box, and the box is on an incline, and we have an angle theta, an angle at which it is inclined, uh, a specific angle at which the box is inclined. Now, if we look at the major force that's acting uh, not the major force, let's say the, the one of the forces, the most obvious force that's acting on the object will be the gravitational force as we uh, drew earlier. Now that gravitational force we will call W for the weight. We could even say uh, F uh, G or F M G force of the earth that is pulling the object down. Now, we, when we're looking at the object uh, where the gravitational force is acting downwards, we, we see we have a slight problem because the gravitational force is not uh, perpendicular or parallel to the inclined plane as seen here. So we see that what we could do is we can resolve this comp uh, the, the weight into its components. So we have a parallel component of weight which acts in the x direction. So we have this case here where we have the weight in the x direction, which we will call Wx. And we have 
the perpendicular component of weight, which is the weight in the y direction, which we will call wy. So this is important when working out sums as well, because when we look at this, we see that the weight of the object on, on the incline can be resolved into its vectors in the x direction and in the y direction or we can see we can say that the weight can be resolved into uh, vectors that are parallel to the plane that means wx will be parallel to the plane we can uh, and wy will be perpendicular to the plane so that is important when doing the sum now to work out the wx the parallel uh, the uh, parallel component of weight or and the wy we'll have to use a little bit of trigonometry and what we come to realize is that if you do the mathematics that we see that this angle here on the top is called theta and i won't go into why how to work it out why is this theta but for now we will accept that the angle at which the slope is inclined is theta then this angle here at the top will also be theta and if you want to work out wx then we realize that if you look at wx wx will be this will be the opposite side of the triangle and this will be the hypotenuse and we see that this will be the adjacent side relating to x now using that what we could do is use our trigonometry and figure out um, what the angle theta is and we can if we are given the weight we can even calculate the wx, the par uh, parallel component of weight, and the wy, the perpendicular component of weight. So now looking at this, we see that that is theta, and if you want to work out wx, we see that wx is opposite, and w is the weight, which is the hypotenuse, and opposite of hypotenuse is equal to sine theta. So we've got a sine theta, which is equal to wx uh, over w. So if you write that out, we can say that sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, which is Wx over W. But if we want to work out Wx, then what we could say that, which is um, what we'll do is multiply both sides by W, and we get a case where we have this, where Wx is equal to W multiplied by sine theta. So that is, uh, we could even say that all the time that if you want to work out Wx, Wx is always equal to W sine theta. And if you look at Wy, we can al always say that Wy is equal to W, if you look at this, it will be adjacent of hypotenuse, the Wy will always be equal to W cos theta. Let's continue with the sum and say, what are other forces, other forces that are acting on the incline? And if you look at these here, I will just take away the components that we've resolved as well, because uh, we could come back to them later. Coming back to the original, we see that this is what we had, that one of the forces acting on an incline was W, which is the weight. And uh, going further, another force that's acting on the incline will be the normal force, the reaction force, as some people say. And that will be perpendicular to the plane, as we saw previously. And that will be in this direction. And if there's no friction, those will only be the only two forces that are acting on an incline. But we see that if there is friction, then the friction will oppose the motion. That means if this slope is high, it has a great enough angle theta, the angle theta is great enough, then this box will slide down the slope after it reaches a certain maximum angle of which the uh, Fs max will be opposite to the direction of the motion. So if we could say this as well, that means if you put that here, then that will be the Fs the, the frictional force and if there's a maximum friction force it just before the point at which the object slides down the slope so maybe let's just label it if you label it this will be this will be our normal force
and this one here will be our F static friction and at a certain angle it will be maximum just before it slides down the slope so we call it FS max I just call it FS max so we have our FS max and we have our normal force at which just before the object slides down the slope so those will be the two forces acting that the FS max acts parallel to the plane and the F normal acts perpendicular to the plane and we got weight acting downwards now let's just bring our components of weight back where we see that our component of weight W uh, parallel will be W in our X direction and our W perpendicular will be our W in the Y direction. So basically we have this as a diagram showing the forces acting on an incline. But now when we do calculations we can't work with W because um, we could work with W but in our case basically we want to work in the X and Y direction uh, relative to the plane. So if we take our W out of the way and we put our WX according to the plane, then we have this beautiful diagram here. And according to this diagram, we see that we, where we see very important concepts that are brought out. That if you look at this diagram, if you look at it in an X direction, then we have FS max and we got WX. And if you look at the Y direction, we got F normal, which will be equal but opposite to FY. And we see that the normal force is equal to FY and it is not equal to W. In fact, only when the object is uh, uh, um, flat on the ground, the normal force will be equal to W. But the moment we have an incline, your normal force becomes less than W. It will be equal to FY depending on it will be equal to Fy depending on the theta of the plane. So we will stop there for this lesson and just to look at it we see that we had an object on a flat surface that we have the x and y direction that is according to the normal Cartesian plane but when we have an object on an incline we see that the x and y plane is parallel and perpendicular to the incline and when an object is on an incline we see that is a gravitational force acting downwards that we know and the gravitational force can be can be uh, resolved into its parallel and perpendicular components as we see in this diagram where we had a diagram like this where we had our x here w in the x direction and w in the y direction was the weight according to that but if you take the components out and if you look at just the forces that are acting on the incline and we see that the weight acts downwards, we have our normal force acting uh, perpendicular to the surface and we have our frictional force acting parallel to the surface and we have a maximum static frictional force, Fs max, maximum static frictional force at the point, uh, at a certain angle theta just before the object starts sliding down the slope. And what is important that when we do sums, uh, and we want to work out uh, the net forces in the x and y direction then we don't work with the weight what we will do is we will work with um, forces in the x direction and the forces in the x direction are uh, frictional force and the uh, x component of weight and the forces in the y direction will be the normal force and the y component of weight and that's where we will stop and in our next lesson we will talk about uh, objects moving at constant velocity and, and other, other aspects as well.